at the open as well. And Julia, signs this week that cyclical stocks are turning. What's your view on this, and particularly media and retail? Okay, we've seen some positive signs for media and retail in the month of November. In fact, just having a look at the last month, and we've seen some huge performances. Seven West Media is up by a massive 33%. Tens up by 30% and Fairfax is also up by 15%. So I guess the big question here is are we seeing short positions being closed out and is that behind the very steep rise that we've seen or are we seeing investors coming back to the party because of low valuations? And if we have a look at short positions, at the beginning of the month Fairfax had one of the biggest at 16% but unfortunately we've seen those short positions actually building throughout the month and on the 23rd of November According to the ASIC website, short positions built from 16% at the beginning of the month to actually 22%. So it does look like shorts have been building there. Seven West Media, though, we've seen a fall from 2.4% to 1.7%. And with 10, we've seen a slight rise from 7.4% to 7.8%. So with the exception of Seven West Media, really no signs there that short positions are being closed out. If anything, for the likes of Fairfax, we've seen an actual build there. And if we have a look at shorts, the top 10, it does, it is is dominated by that retail space as well as media and some material stocks as well. In terms of short positions on the 23rd of November, uh, I guess some of the big ones were in retail and they include JB Hi-Fi, 22%. It's the top shorted stock on the Australian share market at the moment. Maya also in the top 10 with 15% of its stock shorted and Harvey Norman and David Jones also in the top 10. So that retail sector is heavily shorted at the moment and it means that once we do start to see some good numbers coming out of this space that we could see a very sharp increase in these stocks um, as we do see those short positions being closed out. In terms of media, Fairfax is the big one with about 16% of short positions. And if we have a look at the material space, well, Linus as well as Link Energy still have quite a bit of short. So they're the top 10. Altogether, though, we have seen quite a big rally in those media stocks, but it doesn't look like it's been uh, as a cause of those short positions being uh, closed out. But they are coming off a very low base. If we have a look at one media stock, this is Fairfax over the last five years and you can see just how the shares have deteriorated back in 2007 we're seeing the shares trading at about four dollars and forty cents now we're seeing them just under that 48 cent mark so they are coming off a pretty low base but it's good to see some signs of life in these sectors yeah absolutely julia and lots of agms today which ones are you watching ingrid just talked us through sunday so that sounds like a big one there's a huge amount of annual general meetings today. So just sticking with those in the top 200, and we see Aquila Resources, Buru Energy, Colspur, FKP Property, as well as Primary Healthcare and Sundance Resources with their annual general meetings today. Some of the more happier ones will be uh, Buru Energy, which is up 145% in the past year, and Primary Healthcare, which is up by 25%. We have a look at Buru Energy. It's oil and gas exploration in the Canning Basin uh, in WA. And this is quite attractive because of the amount of demand for gas because of some of the uh, big uh, resource projects which are in WA at the moment. So Buru Energy has been doing very well. They've also seen uh, some infrastructure help from the WA government. Primary healthcare, we've seen net profit up by 25% in the last financial year, so signs of growth there, and that's really helped that stock. On the flip side, though, I guess some of the more unhappier AGMs about town will be Aquila Resources, Colspur, as well as FKP Property. These are stocks which have lost around about 50% in the past year. I guess you can understand in terms of resources, but FKP Property really bucking that outperformance that we've seen in the property space. And if we have a look at FKP Property, there's three main divisions, retirement, commercial, as well as residential. We know the construction market has been quite difficult there, so the shares down by 50% and I'm sure there'll be a lot of question marks. Sundance Resources, we do see that shareholder vote on Hanlong, so we'll be watching that very closely. It's getting closer and closer uh, to D-Day with this takeover, so that's going to be a big one. But uh, plenty of news on this Friday, even though it's been quite slow in terms of trading volumes. We are expecting to see some better volumes go through today because we did see single stock options expire yesterday. So we should see some volume related to that this morning. Yeah, Julia, give us a bit of a, I guess, end of month wrap, last trading day for the month. Where have the big moves been? 
Well, if we have a look at the month of November, it does look like we are going to finish out with a slight loss. We're down 1.5% so far, and that means defensives have really outperformed this month. We've seen the likes of the healthcare, the consumer staples, the telecom sector, the utility sectors, the ones that have been the best performing areas. If we have a look at that healthcare space, of course, this has been driven by CSL, which is up 6% for the month. But the telecom sector has also been doing well with a rise of 4%. In fact, in November, we've seen Telstra hitting 52-week highs. On the flip side, though, we have seen the energy space coming under pressure, and that's as we continue to see cost blowouts at these big LNG projects. And this month, we heard of cost blowouts at both the Papua New Guinea LNG project as well as the Gladstone LNG project. So we've seen oil search down by 5.5% and Santos down by 5%. We've also seen the banks coming under pressure. They've now paid their dividends for the year, and it does look like there's been a bit of profit-taking on the back of that. But all up, it does look like we're in for a slight loss for November, down one and half percent so far but the good news is that for 2012 we're in with the game up by 10.4 percent